62 women are suing the parent company of a popular porn website, and tonight, one of those women shares her story with CBS 8. To think that my kid can sleep peacefully and theirs can't is, is just, it, it, it's a feeling that just can't be described. As war intensifies in the Middle East, a San Diego man looks back at his time in Israel's armed forces. Gather up and lather up San Diego for the miles for Melanoma 5K here at De Anza Cove. There. there it yeah, is, the like the freshest oysters of all. Oysters may be delicious, but they're also sustainable. In tonight's Earth 8, we're learning how they help keep our coast clean. CBS 8 News, Live at 6, starts now. The women who say they were coerced into making pornographic videos in San Diego are fighting back with a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Jesse Pagan. Marcella is off tonight. Many of the women say they applied for what they thought were modeling jobs, only to find themselves forced to make pornography. CBS 8 Steve Price joins us from the federal courthouse downtown live with the details. Steve. And Carlo and Jesse, after being sued with, by 50 women back in 2021, the parent company of Pornhub is being sued again, this time by 62 women. And tonight, you're going to hear from one of them. The women say San Diego-based Girls Do Porn used force, fraud, and coercion to get them to make pornographic videos. Now, they're suing the parent company of Pornhub, one of the world's largest publishers of pornography, for spreading those videos around the world. Every view is, is a penny to them, but when you add up billions of views, it, it's a lot of money. So um, they, they really help spread the videos to every corner of the planet. This plaintiff, who asked not to be identified, says she was told multiple times that her videos would never be uploaded to the Internet. But she says within two months, links were sent to her social media contacts, destroying her life. It's degrading, honestly. Everybody seeing me in my most vulnerable state and not, not knowing the backstory. I've been very quiet, so even everybody I grew up with, they don't know, really what I've gone through or what happened. She says she had suicidal thoughts, and even now, a decade later, she can't escape the damage done. The video is actually, unfortunately, it's linked for me to my maiden and my married last name. So, I mean, just people Google people and you, you know, job employment opportunities and everything. It's like, that's the last thing I want is somebody just being able to Google me. And that's the first thing that pops up. And unfortunately, that's been my reality. 62 women are part of this new civil lawsuit alleging sex trafficking, racketeering, conspiracy to commit racketeering and human trafficking. The complaint says to this day, some victims' parents will not speak to them. Many victims lost their jobs and some were expelled from college. Loss of relationships, completely ostracized by my community. Um, I even, you know, it's been a decade, but I just, I can't escape this video even now. Pornhub's parent company, ALO, sent CBS 8 a statement saying in part, out of respect for the integrity of court proceedings, our policy is not to comment on ongoing litigation. We look forward to the facts being fully and fairly aired in that forum. The lawsuit is seeking damages of $10 million for each plaintiff. And the plaintiff that we spoke with said she spent years trying to get Pornhub to take down her videos. She would flag them when she would see them, but she says she never heard anything back and they stayed up. Finally, when criminal charges were filed against a few of the Girls Do Porn employees, that's when she says Pornhub started to take her videos down. Carlo and Jesse. Steve, I, I can't imagine the frustration. So are that mm. woman's videos no longer on the Internet finally? So she got Pornhub to take down the videos, but here's the problem with that. When they were on Pornhub, anybody could download them. So she says, yeah, they're down there, but they could have been uploaded to another website that could be uploaded back to Pornhub. She has no idea because she, has, she doesn't know how many people even have that video personally in their collection. So she continues to be victimized years later. Steve mm. Price reporting for us. Thanks, Steve. A Bonita doctor accused of illegally operating on a patient is back in court today. Dr. Carlos Chacon and one nurse are charged with involuntary manslaughter over the death of Megan Espinosa. In 2018, Espinosa went in for a breast augmentation procedure. Prosecutors say she got anesthesia from a nurse who was not trained to do so, which sent her into cardiac arrest. The doctor who treated Espinosa in the ICU says he was shocked at her condition. 
they described that she was pale and mottled. Her blood pressures were below 100. Her saturations were 60. I mean, this is a picture of someone who's in shock and dying. Today, one nurse who operated with Dr. Chacon also testified, saying she was not certified and had been training during surgery. Finally, a little bit of good news to report about the City of San Diego Public Utilities. And we now know the department is starting to send notices to customers like officials said it would. For months, CBS 8 has been working for you to get answers as to why the department didn't send bills or keep people informed about their accounts. CBS 8's Anna Laurel is live at the Public Utilities Department in Kearney Mesa tonight, continuing our coverage on this. Anna? That's right, Jesse. You know what? A San Diego water customer actually sent us an email he got. It's an actual notification from the city's water department that tells him his account has been flagged because of unusual usage. Well, he still had a lot of questions, but that notice is a lot better than the surprise bills that customers have been getting for the past year. How many other people got all these bills all at once? At the start of 2023, CBS 8 started reporting about problems with San Diego Public Utilities after so many viewers reached out to us about their billing issues. I just didn't notice that I wasn't getting my water bill. What did it add up to? It added up to almost $2,900. San Diego Public Utilities customers not getting water bills for months, then without any explanation or warning, they'd get a ton of bills all at once, totaling thousands of dollars. $16,000, so it was a pretty big shock to us. It's added up to $1,208. It was $5,500. The city told CBS 8 accounts go under investigation when their meter is not in line with historic usage. So the system holds the bills. But customers felt blindsided, especially if there was a water leak they didn't know about. If we had been giving the bills every two months, we would have noticed in September of 2022 that we have had a water leak because the bill went from $200 to $1,000. By the end of summer, the city told CBS 8 it was working on a system to notify customers when their bill was being held and it would be ready to go by fall. This past week, a CBS 8 viewer got this email. It reads in part, this letter is to notify you that the city of San Diego has recorded abnormal water usage on your account that is not in line with your previous usage. We are not sending your water sewer bill at this time until we can investigate further. It lists several possibilities for the abnormal numbers, but if this customer's usage is way high, they wouldn't know. A key detail other customers say they'd like the city to tell them. Why did nobody tell me that I potentially was using this much water? This all could have been prevented. That's the really sad part. Yeah, it could have been prevented had he known he had unusually high usage, right? Well, the customer who sent us this notification, he got it on Thursday. He says that a city worker for the water department was at his house on Friday, checked things out because he had unusually low usage. But everything checked out, his account is clear and back up and running as normal. Live out here at the city's water department, I'm Anna Laurel for CBS 8. Guys. Anna, from what we're learning about these notifications, will they be more detailed as in, you know, tell customers if their usage is too high or too low or what the problem might actually be? Yeah, so think about it. The guy that we heard from, he got the notification on Thursday. Let's say there was some invisible water leak that he didn't know about and the city's notice didn't say there was unusually high usage to let him know so he could go ahead and try to get things worked out. Uh, so we reached out to the city. I emailed them today and asked that specific. Are you going to get more specific? And they sent me a link to other more specific letters that could be sent out to people. So hopefully if you at home get a letter like that, it will be more specific and let you know if you have unusually high that could mean a leak. All right, changes happening to San Diego County's Public Water Utilities Department, partly after a lot of our Working For You coverage. Anna Laurel updating yeah. us tonight on that. Anna, thank you. Tonight, more than 600,000 ballots for the November special election are on their way to registered voters. Those who live in Fallbrook and Rainbow will decide on detaching from the San Diego County Water Authority. Supporters of the measure say it would reduce the cost of water in those communities, but critics say it will cause water rates for other San Diegans to go up. District 4 voters will decide between Monica Montgomery Stepp and Amy Reichert for the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. The winner will fill Nathan Fletcher's vacant seat until 2027. And starting tomorrow, voters can cast their ballots through the mail or at any ballot drop box in the county. 
Voting ends November 7th. A new air pollution sensor in San Isidro is detecting levels of hydrogen sulfide, which is one reason for the awful smell there. People on the South Bay have been complaining about the odor for years, as several sewage issues have led to the area's current crisis. Crews installed the sensors last week. The county's Air Pollution Control District says they collect data every hour. In three days of measuring, the district says the levels exceeded the threshold three times. California is definitely a very touristy place. Yeah. People want to come here. So knowing that the air isn't very great doesn't yeah. make it, it make doesn't you want really, to be here. Yeah, <laughs> makes me want to go back home. <laughs> the Air Pollution Control District plans to use this new data to ask for help from state and federal agencies to fix the issue. We will change reality on the ground in Gaza for the next 50 years. What was before will be no more. Fighting between Israeli forces and Hamas militants is escalating tonight. Israeli military officials say they're conducting widespread strikes against Hamas targets after their surprise attack Friday night. The death toll on both sides is far into the hundreds at this point and growing. Officials confirmed at least 11 Americans are among the dead in Israel. They also say Hamas has taken many other civilians, including Americans, hostage. The White House says it is in close talks with several allies in the region. Meantime, people in San Diego are showing support for both Israelis and Palestinians. Just a couple hours ago, there was a walk in support of Israel on the San Diego State University campus. It started right outside of the Melvin Garb Hillel Center on Lindo Paseo. Around 200 people showed up to raise awareness about what's happening in Israel. This is one day after a pro-Palestinian march in downtown San Diego. The San Diego chapter of the Palestinian Youth Movement held the rally. About 100 Palestinian supporters attended that. Coming up in our next half hour, we'll have more from today's rally, hearing from both sides of the conflict, including a man that says he was once part of Israel's armed forces. Plus, the House is set to vote on its next speaker who's running and how many votes they need to win. It was a minor slip in temperatures for today, but we do have westerly winds picking up and even more of a cool down by the middle of the week. All those details are ahead. Plus, flu season is upon us, but does one kind of needle work for everybody when they're getting their flu shot? Tonight we verify.